Bettina, give me a yeah. second. Yes, you can start. All right. So welcome everybody. Great pleasure to have you here at our first Living Lakes, uh, Blue Lakes, uh, Live Blue Lakes Capacity Workshop. Um, my name is Udo Gartenlöhner. I'm the director of Global Nature Fund, and I have the pleasure and the privilege to facilitate and moderate this session today. Uh, do not waste too much time uh, in terms of housekeeping or technical questions. Feel free to post the questions in the chat and Bettina Schmidt from our GLF team will be happy to answer. Uh, we will pro provide contact details and all presentations after the session. So you will have all information uh, and you will receive that via email. Uh, let me very briefly introduce the three speakers of the first block, the first session, and all three speakers will facilitate an interactive breakout room, a workshop, so to say, where you have opportunity to ask questions, uh, make comments, and share your experiences. In all these sessions, I would like to ask you to introduce yourself later if you want to say anything and to be very brief and concise. You can also post your questions in the chat. If you want to speak later in the workshop, in the breakout room, please consider to raise your hand before you speak. During the first very brief introductory presentations, we do not have time to react to questions. Bear with us uh, and wait until we have then the interactive sessions. Uh, we will have three presentations from Nina Van Zinnig Bergman, also known as I have learned as uh, Nika Toulon. My French is not so good, but I hope I'm able to pronounce Toulon accurately from the International Waste Platform, sharing with us experiences also from Indonesia. Then Bettina Schmidt from GNF will introduce the EU Live Blue Lakes project very briefly to you. And uh, last but not least, during the first session, we will have uh, Fabrizio Sodu, the project manager of the Live Blue Lakes project from Lega Ambiente in Italy. Um, during the first session, uh, you can switch it on later during the break in the breakout rooms. I would like you, I would ask you to um, mute yourself. That is very important. And maybe it also makes sense to switch your camera off. Later in the breakout session, I would ask you to switch it on then we have smaller groups and then we can see each other. Okay, without too much further ado, I would like to hand over to Nina if Bettina does not have any further technical or housekeeping announcements. No, we, Nina can start. Okay, then it's your floor, Nina. <laughs> Thanks, one moment, I'll share my screen. And uh, for the speakers, you have been brief, but just uh, if you allow me a last comment, after five minutes, we will give you a little tone, a little signal. Uh, then we would like to ask you to come to an end within the next one or two minutes that we can uh, meet our schedule and stay within our given time frame. Thank you very much. One moment. So we can see your screen, Nina. Okay. If you go into full screen presentation mode. Yeah, I'm trying. One moment. No, it's a little further left, further left. Uh, too much left. Uh, it's in my file. One moment. Or you can use F5. Oh, good. Is that Apple? No. <laughs> uh, <not too> much. <laughs> it works as well. <laughs> One moment. I don't know. I don't know. In any case, I'll just start. No, you're pretty close to the to starting. You Wait. can see that camera and just above the camera, slightly to the right, yes, this symbol. Yep. Uh, yeah, sorry. Okay, sorry for this delay. Yeah. Uh, first of all, Udo and uh, Bettina, thanks very much for organizing this meeting. I think it's uh, super important and very much neglected, this um, issue of pollution in lakes. Uh, I've made slides with lots of links, so you can share it afterwards, and I won't go into much detail in the text here, but I just want to stress what we already know, that is that water, fresh water is uh, our lifeline and uh, it's impacted by pollution and climate change, global warming, uh, lake uh, desalination or salination of lakes and so on. And uh, just yesterday there was a meeting or day before, 
about why isn't water uh, at the top of the climate agenda. So you can later explore this link. And then uh, regarding uh, fresh water, liquid surface water, 87% is contained in lakes. And uh, we are just using these lakes as a garbage bin, basically. So one moment. Yeah, so I just searched some uh, data and about 60 million people rely on lakes and rivers for their livelihoods. And uh, of course, the degradation of lakes due to pollution and to uh, salination and um, uh, global warming contributes to a decline in uh, fresh uh, fresh water fish, it impacts agriculture for irrigation of crops, human health, uh, the water source for drinking, it impacts tourism and uh, it basically it degrades the whole lake ecosystem. And so it's all caused by human activity near lakes and uh, so we cause it and we are impacted by it. So uh, I did a search on uh, the 25th largest lakes, which uh, affect the livelihood of uh, people in about 20 countries. Uh, many of these lakes board have borders from different countries. So there's an issue regarding uh, management of the lake and managing the pollution. And uh, basically of these 25 largest lakes, uh, only one, I couldn't find any pollution data, and that's uh, a lake called uh, Vostok, and it's a subglacial lake, and it's uh, in Antarctica, so it's just not at the surface. Uh, but all these other lakes are polluted and uh, by multi uh, pollutants, so I've just made a short overview. Uh, the sources are industrial, agricultural, municipal, and fisheries. Uh, so basically, uh, yeah, later you can search. All these lakes uh, have uh, link here links to pollution sources, and municipal how, uh, waste is a big source uh, regarding sewage, chemicals, medic medicine, which is flushed through the toilet, uh, antibiotics. There is just a new research about uh, antidepressiva, which uh, impact the environment. <clears throat> um, and then there's a big source of microfibers from washing machines and uh, people even flush contact lenses through the, the toilet and wet wipes. And then there's building waste, uh, litter. And so that's not only uh, plastic litter, that's any kind of litter. And then a hot topic now is uh, plastic diapers and actually also sanitation pads for uh, women uh, menstruation and also incontinence. They're all plastic and they're not recyclable and they all end up in the environment in some place, either littered or in uh, landfills. Uh, okay, and then uh, yeah, it's a global issue, this plastic diaper pollution. So in Indonesia, you can uh, follow this group. Uh, they do a lot of research of uh, diapers in rivers, also contributing to, um, uh, what is it, ocean plastic. And uh, we just started an, an, uh, a campaign to reduce single-use plastic and actually the UN just commissioned a report about this impact because that was also not so much, um, what is it, discussed, uh, diapers, plastic diapers. Okay, uh, that was it. I had to keep it short and I will see you afterwards in the breakout session about Indonesia. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Nina, for that uh, concise overview on pollution of lakes and in particular of macro pollution. And thank you for respecting the time limit so accurately. Excellent. I, I'll immediately hand over to Bettina. Uh, and we have an excellent bridge from this general aspects of pollution of lakes to the micro pollution. And Bettina will give us a short introduction to the EU Life Blue Lakes project. And we will hear more about this project later from Fabrizio. 
Yes, thank you. So thank you, Nina, for this introduction. Yes, unfortunately, we can see pictures like this all over the planet. And if this plastic rubbish is um, decomposed by UV radiation, wind and water into smaller and smaller pieces, we have an even bigger problem. And this is called microplastics. And therefore, we initiated the Live Blue, Blue Lakes project. Uh, we are seven partner organizations from Italy and Germany, from NGOs, the scientific and the governmental sector, under the lead of the Italian NGO Legambiente. And our project measures are implemented in five lake regions in Italy and Germany. Yeah, microplastic particles have been found in all our project lakes. And to answer the question, what is microplastics, is not so easy because there's currently no standardized definition for this term. But mostly it is used for plastic particles or fibers that are smaller than five millimeters. And a distinction is made between primary and secondary microplastics. So we follow the de definition that primary microplastics have been produced intentionally and added to a product. And secondary microplastics are the results of um, aging and degradation processes in the environment or by using the products. Microplastics can have different sources. So this is um, uh, a small selection of sources. So besides the degradation of plastic litter, it can be the abrasion from tires and road surfaces. It can be microfibers from synthetic textiles or additives from cosmetic and cleaning products. We have different sources in connection with agriculture, so in form of fertilizers or plant protection products, and they can be released from artificial turf pitches. But there are many more um, sources of microplastics. So the plastic particles can also pose a risk to the environment and to human health. They are very persistent in the environment. And because they are so small, they can enter the food chain. And bacteria and pollutants can attach themselves to the very rough surface of the fragments and therefore be transported through the food chain. And toxic chemicals can also be released during the um, degradation process of the material in the environment. So we will hear more information about our project measures in the following presentations. I would just like to highlight our awareness raising campaign. And in one of the following breakout sessions, we will have a closer look at an interactive information tool, which we um, developed in the project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bettina. You also respected uh, the time limits uh, absolutely accurately. That's amazing. Um, I think, yes, in industrialized countries, uh, this is really now a growing issue, uh, how to deal with micro and nano pollution and uh, the substances and the particles that have negative effects also to the health that uh, do have endocrine effects uh, um, as well. And uh, as you said, you have we have to take influence on the political level uh, and the regulatory frameworks on the private sector, on the industry, tire industry, etc. But a very important um, target group, so to say, are the municipalities, because they often manage the sewage treatment facilities in the lake areas. And they, of course, have a direct influence in terms of information and communication to the citizens. And because of that, Lega Ambiente who has designed and started this, that project, and we're very happy that they have involved us, uh, have defined and identified the municipalities as one of the central target groups uh, to work with. And Fabrizio Sobu from Lega Ambiente Italy will tell us more about this strategy. Fabrizio, please. 
Thank you, Udo. I'll share my screen. Let me see if you see my screen. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much, Udo. Thank you, Bettina, for introducing the project Blue Lakes. So as, 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 the, as she said, this, this project is a life project started in, a 2000, in the end of 2019. And among the actions, uh, one of, of uh, as, as Udo said, one of the most important, in my opinion, is uh, the involvement of uh, uh, municipalities and local stakeholders in order to face the problem of microplastic. Uh, one, of, of the main, uh, um, one of the main uh, as I say, a tool for fighting the microplastic and commit a local uh, institution is, uh, is, the, is this voluntary tool that we call the lake paper that should be uh, adopted by not only public stakeholders, but also uh, private stakeholders, uh, economic operators. In the, in the lake areas, and and this is uh, should should be as a you know a, a, um, as a share share strategy and, and solution for fighting the the problem of plastic and microplastic in lakes. So, this lake paper would be the result of a participatory process that is is has is being carried out in three Italian lakes and two German lakes. So, and this participatory process is involving uh, municipalities uh, and uh, private stakeholders and citizens for, for adopting a common solution to fight the problem of microplastic. Uh, this this uh, um, uh, slide share, uh, uh, shows how the, the participatory process have been working here in Italy. Uh, we had uh, uh, an online presentation of all the whole process uh, for all the invited and the participants. So after this, after this uh, presentation, we had uh, three uh, thematic workshop with the uh, public stakeholders, business activities and uh, association for each uh, of the three Italian lakes. And in, in, during this workshop, we try to collect the suggestion, their opinion, or their uh, knowledge about the problem. So uh, designing a common background and uh, you know, finding, finding a possible uh, potential solution uh, to, 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 to solve this problem in, in order to be you know, uh, coherent and acting in the same direction. Uh, after uh, this workshop, we, we on online platform, which we upload a, a draft document for each lake, where the participant could could uh, uh, could make their own contribution. Uh, uh, we will have we are having the final workshop one for for each lake for presenting the the, the results of this process. So, as said, the the tool of participatory process. Uh, uh, at the beginning, where there were been uh, have been carried out uh, the webinars to present the project and uh, to to present the, the lake paper uh, for each lake, and in the online platform where they where the participant could uh, could uh, uh, insert the suggestions. For example, in Garda, we had uh, a, a 89 people uh, uh, that that signed. Uh, the, the, the webinar at the end said 71 uh, participants. So just to have an idea of the, you know, the, the participatory process. Uh, in, in the online platform, we, sh we show the participant uh, three section with an introduction uh, the section on personal data and uh, an opening section where people could give their feedback and comments about the, the, the lake paper of, the, of their own lake. Uh, then we had a specific session where in each lake paper we define five strategic areas, uh, human and coordination, awareness raising, uh, three air, uh, pollution and parodying. So for each of the strategic area, the participant could uh, assess the importance and give uh, the evaluation and priority and also provide comments and uh, suggesting, uh, you know, action to be carried out for achieving the objective. Uh, 
so the, this online consultation platform will remain open uh, through the no, not March, but all the, the springtime. And uh, we are now organizing the final workshop for, we have already organized three final workshops for the, the, the involvement, the involvement uh, participant uh, for each category. Uh, just to show this is in Italian because we still have a, we, uh, the, you know, the not definitive version of the lake paper, but just to show that for each uh, strategic area, so we have different objectives. And for each, each objective, we, we define actions that can be, uh, uh, that can, that can be uh, taken. And uh, for each action, we, we identify specific objectives and the organization that can be uh, part of these of this, uh, this actions. Uh, this final the slide is a, the, uh, it's a, a draft of the commitment that we'll ask to the participant of the lake paper process. So after, after the, the end of the participatory process, they will sign uh, this document indicating uh, which action will, they will be carried out in a voluntary way. So in the end of September, we will present in a final workshop for each lake, the, the final uh, lake paper for each lake. Uh, sorry, I, I was a little late. <laughs> uh, thank you for attention. Excellent. Uh, that is still in time. Thank you very much. Uh, that uh, was a, a very good and concise overview. And, and as you said, Fabrizio, the intention of this EU life project is to share experiences. So we encourage you to also share your experiences with you, with us. Visit the website, I posted them in the chat. And then in the end, uh, we would like to, of course, use that best practice um, information and knowledge that uh, the team has developed uh, to share that as well in order to replicate uh, the, the positive and the functioning approaches. So let me share my screen now in order to introduce the working groups briefly to you. So my screen should be visible. Bettina? Yes, yes. Yes. Good. We will have three uh, breakout rooms, um, simultaneous big breakout rooms. The first one is managed and moderated by Nina together with myself. So we will try to capture the results of the discussion in very, very brief minutes, which, which we will be sharing with you later. And the focus of this working group will be on reduction and recycling of plastic waste. waste sorry. The second uh, working group is on awareness raising and what consumers can do and how we can convey the message to consumers how we all can reduce microplastics in our everyday life. This group will be moderated by Bettina and Dimitri Vedel from the Lake Constance Foundation. That organization is also involved in the Life uh, Blue Lakes project. And last but not least, Fabrizio, whom you just heard, will facilitate the working group on Lake communities and what they can do. The, municipalities uh, to give a contribution to reduce microplastic once it's there. Of course, it's better to avoid, but once you have it in the water ecosystems, uh, you have to deal with it. And Fabrizio will be supported by Marion Hammel, also from the Lake Constance Foundation. So I stop my screen again and I hand over to Bettina and she will explain how we will um, be able to join the three different working groups or you will be able. And then we will have after 35 minutes from now, we will have a short break and then we reconvene in about 50 minutes from now, different time zones. It will be 10 minutes past 3 p.m. here in Central Europe, but we have participants from Sri Lanka, India, Cambodia, uh, Thailand, uh, Tanzania, so the time zones are different. Okay, Bettina, please let us know how it works. Yes, so I will um, now open the um, breakout session rooms. 
So I hope you can see now in the uh, toolbar at, um, at the bottom of your screen, or if you use a web app, uh, it should be in the left upper corner, a symbol with um, four squares. And if you click on that, you should be able to uh, select one of the three breakout sessions. So room number one will be the best practice example from Indonesia. Room number two will be awareness raising. And room number three, the lake paper for communities. And you can click on, um, uh, on this uh, room and enter the room. And then, uh, yeah, we will close the room and have the, uh, the break. It's uh, visible. Uh, in my case, it's German. The name of the rooms is English. And Beitreten is oh. for enter. So you have to click on the blue German word Beitreten. So, um, in Lake we have uh, done together with our Spanish colleagues during the break, but then we thought you deserve your break. Uh, so we have only posted the link to the YouTube channel where you can check this video and watch it. And Bettina has also shared a link to our interactive information tool that is uh, linked to the Live Blue Lakes. There you can also find more information on Blue Lakes as well on, as on the websites of Lake Ambiente and GNF. So welcome back to the second part of this interactive workshop. Uh, as I said, the first one of its kind. So we will have other ones and we're happy to inform you and involve you. And we will be pleased to welcome you back again. So the second part will dive a little bit deeper into the scientific part of microplastics and um, how to monitor the pollution. Uh, and this, I think, is a very important basis for regulatory frameworks. And it's no wonder that we will have a number of Italian speakers, because Lega Ambiente and the Italian institutions that are involved in EU Live Blue Lakes are very active and have a profound knowledge on that. So we will be starting uh, with Dr. Valentina Della Bella. Uh, from the Environmental Protection Agency of Umbria. What a wonderful name. If you're German, you're always envious about the Italians, but if you're German and if you, if you have my name, then you're even more envious if you read a name like this. Then Professor uh, Francesco Fattone from the Polytechnical University of Marche. And then Dimitri Vedel, um, from the Lake Constance Foundation. They will introduce you to their topics um, later. And Leonardo Gatta from the uh, Central River Basin District Authority of the Apennine uh, region of Italy again. So we will have four short presentations. So without too much further ado, we start into them. And then we go again into the working groups uh, using the breakout rooms. Valentina, this is your floor. Thank you for being with us. Yes, thanks Udo for uh, the introduction. Your screen is okay. Busy. Can you see? Yes. Okay, thank you. Good evening. And uh, I'm Valentina Della Bella. I'm a, a biologist working at the Environmental Protection Agency of Umbria region in central Italy, ARPA Umbria. And uh, for my agency, I'm technical reference of uh, Blue Lakes project. And first I would like to thank uh, uh, Bettina Udo and team of Global Nature Found for organizing this workshop, other speakers and uh, all participants to these meetings. As we, as we in previous presentations, the microplastic pollution is a global problem that unfortunately is small only in sites of particles. 
the phenomenon of microplastics is very complex. Uh, I would like to highlight the importance of the phenomenon of microplastic pollution in lakes and in inland waters in general. Even if they represent a small amount of the all fresh water on the planet, only 1.2% is represented by surface waters. People obtain a large portion of water from them for the various anthropogenic uses that we call ecosystem services. As Nina von Tolon uh, show in detail before, a recent review highlights how microplastic pollution can prevent the achievement of some of the sustainable development goals of preventing and reducing pollution on marine and fresh waters, as for example, the target 14 and 15. For um, marine ecosystems, uh, uh, there is a monitoring protocol shared at European level, while for surface waters, water frame directive legislation that establish indicators and limits for monitoring the quality of inland waters does not still consider the presence and the effects of microplastics on their state. Many studies have been conducted on the presence and dispersion of microplastics in the marine environment since the 70s years, but fresh waters are not free from this problem uh, we see before. To date, uh, for inland water, especially lake water, there are uh, still some gaps uh, to which the project like Blue Lakes want to respond. The lack of standards and protocols for monitoring sample processes and uh, analysis. Quantity and distribution of microplastics in rivers and lakes, characterization of the situation, data, data of temporal trends, the effect of aquatic organisms, and last but not least, we see the information and awareness of the local population. <laughs> so preliminary study on microplastics uh, in several Italian lakes carried out by Enea and the Gambiente confirmed the presence of microplastics in these ecosystems. So uh, one of the main uh, objective of Blue Lakes is to design and test a standard microplastic monitoring protocol in the two pilot areas, Lake Bracciano and Lake Rasimeno located in central Italy. The sampling and laboratory analysis of these activities are still ongoing. The next phases of this action include the drafting of the standardized protocol and its testing in the pilot areas, the development of data management system, and next year, uh, a protocol dissemination and uh, the organization of a training course for technicians or other environmental protection agency at uh, Italian level and the monitoring program information. So we could deepen uh, the different aspects in this uh, the discussion section later. Thank you for the attention. Thank you very much, uh, Valentina, for that uh, exciting overview. Um, I think one might ask, um, we know that it's quite difficult to uh, record microplastics, in particular, if you talk about fractions that are below 50 micron or probably 10 micron even. And why is it important to have a standard microplastic protocol? And we will elaborate or we'll uh, dig deeper into that question in the working group later. Yes, but yeah, sure. My view on that is, if you allow me just one comment, I think it's very important uh, to have standardized um, microplastic protocols to influence the regulatory frameworks and ultimately to involve the polluters into the financial consequences of this pollution. That means the pharmaceutical industry, the tire industry, and to internalize those externalities. And I think for that, you really have to have scientifically proved standardized microplastic protocols. That's why it's so important to have that work. So thank you, Valentina, for thank sharing you. the work of Alpa Umbria. Thank um, you. So next presentation is from Professor Fattone uh, from the Polytechnical University, uh, focusing a little bit more on uh, then the issue of what do we do if we have microplastic in the water ecosystems already? And if 
it will ultimately uh, end up in the water treatment uh, or, or in the sewage treatment or wastewater treatment plants. Francesco. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Udo. And uh, thanks to all the audience uh, for being here with us. Uh, you should see my screen, right? Do you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, my my, my I'm a, an environmental and chemical engineer by background, uh, and uh, my role in the project together with our team is to uh, analyze the occurrence, removal, and fate of microplastics in water infrastructure. So, life through lakes is focusing on lakes, on environment, but if we consider, for example, Lake Garda, Lake Garda is uh, the Italian largest lake and one of the largest in Europe. Uh, this is uh, a strategic uh, drinking water basin that is used uh, partially, but is crucial uh, in an emergency situation. And this is wastewater catchment. There is a presence of combined sewer overflow because uh, the majority of the sewer systems, uh, Europe, but not only is combined, so it's collecting uh, black water and uh, urban runoff, uh, surface runoff. There is a presence of uh, drinking water treatment plants uh, and there is a presence of wastewater treatment plants in the catchment. In addition, to safeguard the quality of the lake, especially with consent to eutrophication, so nitrogen and phosphorus, so COD, the conventional parameters, uh, the water infrastructures are uh, continuously under renovation and optimization. And uh, in addition, Lake Garda and other lakes uh, uh, have a huge seasonal fluctuations uh, due to the tourist presence uh, that is increasing uh, the anthropic uh, pressures. Uh, and finally, we have uh, the impact of uh, global changes such as climate change and not only. So the interface between water infrastructures and lake uh, is crucial. That's why within Life Blue Lakes, uh, we are uh, uh, considering uh, the occurrence, removal and final fate of microplastics uh, uh, in uh, urban wastewater treatment plants, in drinking water treatment plants, and in combined sewer overflow. We are not starting from scratch. This activity was started uh, uh, thanks to the collaboration that we are having uh, with uh, Stefania Gorbi, Lucia Pittura, and with Enea uh, in different water bodies. Uh, and together we are focusing on this different, difficult uh, uh, matrix to be analyzed, that is wastewater and sewage sludge where we had to work quite hard to find uh, the best protocol to sample and characterize microplastics and microparticles. Here you can see an example of a paper that has been finalized in a conventional uh, and uh, advanced with treatment plants where we have uh, found out that more than 80%, in some cases, more than 90% of microparticles is removed, but then finally is retained into the sewage sludge so we are transferring the problem from water to sludge. And in addition, the most frequent microplastics are polyethylene and polypropylene. Finally, uh, we had the results uh, how to optimize uh, the sampling and uh, characterization system, but I will leave these results for the breakout session to leave some suspense and to activate a bit the audience in the breakout session later on. So stay with us. What we are doing in uh, Life Blue Lakes, uh, we are, um, uh, sampling and working in two wastewater treatment plants, even more actually two within the project, but many utilities were very interested in our works. So we're working even more, at least two, at least two drinking water treatment plants, at least one combined sewer overflow. And we are finally aiming not only at uh, characterizing the occurrence, removal and fate, but also to finally deliver technical protocols of support for the operators. We would like to have the operators engaged and the operators be able to deal with microplastics without support of universities. And so to raise awareness and to raise knowledge, to raise know-how. How to sample microplastics? This is the evolution of what we have been doing. Starting from pumping and sieving, uh, almost manually, we had to sample 1,000 liter. Then we had to increase this volume. And finally, we had set up uh, an automatic sampler that is able to filter cubic meters of water because the quantity of the sample that is used is crucial to have a representative result. Here you can see some example of the automatic sample that has been uh, 
um, properly uh, designed and built for uh, the Life Brewery X project, uh, where we have put uh, um, different filters to finally uh, have uh, a result that we compared with the previous results where lower sample was analyzed. We are working not only in wastewater treatment plants, but we are also working in drinking water treatment plants. In particular, these plants are uh, treating surface water by different treatment drains, clarifloculation, rapid filtration, activated carbon, ozonation in different combinations. And by this activity, we will have, and we are having already, a full framework of drinking water treatment uh, units uh, differently combined and how microplastics are evolving in these units. These results are not only for scientific papers. These results are used to train, to train operators, as I mentioned. In fact, we uh, have developed uh, a survey that was distributed among uh, Italian and German utilities and stakeholders. And uh, what we found out is that uh, uh, what well, it's clear that the microplastics were not included in the design parameters of our infrastructure, but already now our infrastructure are able to remove these particles and to rethink these into the solids that then need, need to be handled. There is a huge interest from utilities to be involved in the activity, especially to be trained. So there is a huge interest to know more, to understand more, and to monitor more. And in fact, within Life Blue Lakes, we will have uh, training modules for operators that will start from basic knowledge about microplastics, occurrence removal, will go to the treatment trains, typical treatment trains of wastewater and drinking water, and finally will focus on risk-based management, risk associated, to, final, to finally release the Blue Lake label to operators that will attend our courses. Thanks a lot for your attention and uh, further information to the breakout session. Thank you very much, Francesco, for that important insight into what happens in wastewater treatment plants and how to remove the microplastics that we already have in the water in those facilities. For instance, with a fourth or fifth stage, and uh, we will, in your group, talk about, I assume, activated carbon and all these technologies, but also the fate, uh, as it's said in your title, of microplastics later. So what happens to the sludge and the re residues uh, of the sewage treatment facility. Uh, thank you very much. So the next presentation will be from Dimitri Bedell. And uh, we have been talking a lot about the companies uh, and where microplastic comes from in the first place, uh, primary and secondary microplastic, as Bettina has explained. And of course, the industry plays an important role in bringing those particles into the environment. And Dimitri Bedell will involve us into the strategy, um, how to share the responsibility with those that really carry uh, a larger portion of that responsibility. Dimitri, please. Oh, just unmute. We can see your screen yeah. and we can okay. hear you. You can hear me perfect. Okay, thanks Udu for your introduction. Um, I just want to give a quick overview about the participatory process to involve companies um, of the outdoor tire and cosmetic industry in this uh, Life Blue Lakes project. Um, I'm Dimitri from the Lake Constance Foundation and I'm a project manager there. Um, yeah, so um, the idea was um, to, to find not only the main sources of microplastics in, in the lakes and um, to address these companies, but also to define those companies who we can use for our public relation, for our communication purpose. That's why we defined um, three different um, industries. You can see, um, looking at the emissions in Germany, grams per person per year, um, that microplastic and cosmetic industries doesn't play one of the major roles, but it's still one of the an, an important factor in, in the sources of microplastic. The second thing is, the second point was the fiber abrasion and textile um, washing. And 
the main source for uh, microplastic was the tire abrasion um, that all of us use or uh, creates every day um, by using their car. So why these target groups for our work um, with the with the industries? Um, first of all, these target groups and these business sectors, um, the tire abrasion or the tire industry is important because it carries a lot of um, these microplastics in the environment with the rainwater and the wind, and it's the main source of um, microplastic in lakes. And even if it's very important to find alternatives um, to, to, to the products that are used in tires, it's very important to start this dialogue process um, to, to find um, other ways how we can handle this abrasion beside the roads um, in the municipalities and to put this water into um, well recycling systems. The second point was the synthetic um, textiles um, where already um, Bettina gives a quick overview about the reasons and the sources. Um, for us, it's very important to address these um, companies because it's also important for us knowing that we are in a dialogue process with them that we can talk to the consumers and creating an awareness um, about the clothing and about what the washing of their synthetic clothes causes to microplastic. And last but not least, the cosmetic and cleaning products that are also very um, important for us in um, our dialogue with the consumers and also where it's possible to show that there are a lot of different alter alternatives um, that are already existing and numerous of these um, alternatives are already used in biological or ecological um, cosmetic products. So what we did first is to give a, 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 an overview of um, of of the situation um, we we elaborated so called fact sheets um, to each sector to the car tires to the cosmetics and to the textile products and um, describe the situation and also describe the opportunities these industries have to find alternatives as i mentioned it in some of these sectors it's easier to find alternatives in other sectors. It's not so easy, but also um, it's very important for us to have something in our hand to, to be in contact with these companies and to try to start a dialogue process um, for trying to, to create an awareness of, of, this, of this problem. You can find all these um, fact sheets on our website, the Live Blue Lakes. They are all in, in German and English and translated in, in several languages. So it's also important for us to, to continue um, this, this process because um, as you can, uh, or as it's uh, clear, it's not something that you can change from one day to another. And it starts a long process of finding new solutions. And it, there are already numerous studies, projects, and, and plenty of initiatives um, how microplastic emissions can be reduced. But there is still a very long way to go to, to find these alternatives and um, on the other side, create the awareness that is necessary by the consumers to understand why microplastic is such a danger of uh, the environment and a, an obvious danger as we heard it um, actually in the recent presentations for our lakes. So it's uh, very important for us to bring all these persons, um, all these people together and these actors um, to help us on the one hand to find new solutions, but also to be in contact with them and um, 
well mentioned new rules new legislations um to to be to do our intense work to start this change of using these um, plastic products um, another thing is that we are not only trying to work with the um, industry or the business sector but also we want to inform other ngos to focus on the problem um, that they can address these target groups so we can ensure that these informations came from <clears throat> different sides to um, this business sectors so if you have some further um, questions or need some further informations about um, our work and how to address um, these companies please feel free to contact us and now i hand back to to udo please udo Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Dimitri. A very good overview on the relevant industry sectors. And as you said, uh, we're pursuing a very interactive dialogue with some of these industries like cosmetics or garment. And we're trying to tip gently on the toes of some that do not move so much, like the tire industry. Um, we're still only tipping on the toes. So other measures will come later. Okay. Um, I think all these activities that we have heard of are important uh, and create a kind of a holistic portfolio, but they are not so efficient if they are pursued on vague ground. So it depends also very much on the legal frameworks. And we will hear more from Leonardo Gatta now about the legal frameworks in the European Union. Leonardo, please. Yes. Just try to share my presentation. So. You can see the screen? Yes, visible. Okay. So we are talking about the, the legal framework. So improving this question in, in this uh, project uh, is, uh, is uh, very important as uh, uh, Udo just said. Um, I have a lot of, of, of slides, but I just uh, going deep to, on some slides and I just provide the, the other slides uh, for, to the participant for, uh, for, the, for the end of the workshop or maybe for the breakout uh, section. So uh, just put this on. Yeah dealing with microplastic into the water b6 section of the blue lakes project aims to strengthen the governance process of key institutional stakeholders responsible in various ways of water management this action of course is carried out through the definition of relationship models with the institution involved in the water framework directive so what is already uh, organized as a legal framework in europe with specific attention to policies, plans, and programs aimed at identifying possible sector for win-win action. Even if all the bodies have specific institutional competence and responsibilities regarding the water sector, they often do not dialogue sufficiently to have a complete interdisciplinary vision of the problem caused by microplastic in freshwater and to make a common effort to face this threat. As you know, this is a, a just a view of the Water Framework Directive that uh, uh, started in 2000. But uh, of course, the, there are some uh, precedent uh, uh, directives concerning water. The, the, there are a, a lot of deadlines, and now we are going to this, the, the end uh, uh, to the, of the second cycle of the management. 2027, where we have to uh, reach the, the environmental goals for the water bodies. So we have to uh, consider this uh, already organized situation in the legal framework uh, when we are talking also uh, uh, with, um, uh, of the new um, pollutant uh, microplastics. 
So we have to reach the, the, the good status to maintain the high status of the water bodies when exist and to prevent the deterioration of water. It's already organized um, at the regional level uh, monitoring of the water. There are a lot of items to monitor already uh, on the ground. So we have to consider that the microplastic is something uh, added uh, on this already monitoring system. And also the, the organization of the legal framework is, is very uh, complicated because the already uh, organized water framework directive is complemented by the, some uh, specific directive, directive like groundwater directive, environmental quality standard directive, commission decision, decision like ecological status, and also the previous directive like urban wastewater treatment directive, nitrates directive and batting water directive. There are also extended scope for integrated water management like flood directive and marine strategy directive. So again, when we are talking about to consider in the, new, in the legal framework, the new pollutant microplastic, we have to consider all this already done organization. This is something that we can consider also in the breakout section, uh, how is organized the, the governance process of the water management. So we have to consider as is shown in the deep sea uh, framework, uh, we have to consider the drivers as we, as we just see in the previous presentations. So let's say uh, agriculture or industrial polluters uh, or other also urban uh, polluters, uh, let's say households. So we have the pressure that's going going in, in, into the water bodies. So the the polluter the pollution modify the the, the status of the water bodies and uh, become an impact on some uh, uh, receivers of these uh, impacts. Uh, like a fish or human or some other um, uh, animals or uh, chemicals or physical uh, impacts. So we have to, to think about the response. So we have to, uh, to, to solve the problem of, uh, let's say in this case, the microplastics. So when we think about all these things, we have to consider uh, how to stop the microplastics uh, at the driver's level, how to stop uh, uh, as a pollution uh, as, as an, uh, at the precious level, for example, uh, uh, as you, you, we have seen just uh, before uh, in, the, in the pressures, uh, we can try to put uh, some filter, for example, in the water system management or uh, to, to solve some, uh, to, to re recycle or, or to uh, stop the, the, the polluted microplastic uh, directly in the environment or in the impact. All these things we have to do uh, following, uh, 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 we have seen uh, uh, through the pub public participation process and also the economic analysis process. The economic analysis process because we have to deal with a, a lot of uh, drivers and, and also uh, entities, uh, uh, public bodies or private bodies in the in the water governance. And when we deal with all the uh, microplastic uh, governance, we have to deal also with the uh, technical solution and uh, economic uh, problem. Let's say costs for the management of the microplastics. So we have to consider all these things. Uh, uh, at the moment, uh, the, uh, our authority is uh, uh, organized for uh, this uh, specific activity B6 uh, as identified in the permanent observatory of water use of central happening district the suitable location in which to activate the working panel of the project for which to prepare the lake white paper. The lake white paper as an institutional tool for sharing knowledge and needs to address the problem of microplastic in water. 
In the working panel participate the institutional stakeholder at different levels, national, regional, environmental agency, professional organization by sector and so on. A special section was therefore dedicated in the observatory to carry out the project, uh, uh, the working panel activities, and a special space uh, has been dedicated on the uh, institutional website of our authority, as you can see. The activity takes place through three types of meetings, plenary meetings, bilateral restricted meetings, and consultation uh, meetings with all the relevant stakeholders. And at the moment, continuous connection with the implementation of the Directive 91-2071 that takes into consideration some emerging pollutants, including microplastics. Recently, the activity continued with the organization of specific questionnaire, which was submitted to the working panel at the meeting of the observatory. And the results are very interesting. The results are that uh, the, we need to address the impacts of microplastic as soon as possible, let's say awareness. We need to understand better how to do it, let's say need for knowledge. We are worried about the future costs of the necessary measures and the recovery of the costs, let's say need to improve governance and financial flows. We can see all these things in, in deep in the breakout session. So thank you for your kind attention. Uh, thank you very much, Simile, Leonardo. Yes, um, I just, uh, let's see. Yes, I think with the Water Framework Directive and the related directive, we do have a good legal framework inside the European Union. On the other hand, it's no secret that all the 27 countries will fail to achieve the 27 results. So the question is whether a late white paper can contribute uh, to a better achievement of the results of the Water Framework Directive in the field of plastics and microplastic pollutions of waters, uh, lakes particularly. Thank you very much. So we will go now into the breakout rooms. I share my screen again to briefly introduce the groups to you. I hope that you can my, see my screen now. Yes. So the group number one, uh, coordinated by Valentina, will discuss the standardization of the monitoring uh, protocol in the field of microplastics. Um, Valentina will be assisted by myself. Then we have the second group, uh, Francesco, and that group will be dealing with how to remove microplastics from the wastewater in the sewage treatment facilities. Uh, that group will be assisted by Dimitri doing a short protocol or money, um, short minutes. And uh, the third group, what we just have heard from Leonardo, uh, the late white paper and how this is connected to the European regulatory frameworks, in particular, the Water Framework Directive. And Marian Hammer will work together with Leonardo in that working group three. So uh, choose your group again. Uh, Bettina will start uh, that possibility uh, and the sessions. Thank you. Yes, one second. So I have just started the sessions. You should see them and select one. So your favorite choice. It seems as we are complete again. I hope that you had good discussions in your little working groups. Um, I have attended two and both have been very active and interactive. And I think that we have achieved our objective, what we want to, to achieve, to share some of the results and the experiences of the EU 
live blue lakes projects and um, to work together on that beautiful motto of the project don't leave microplastics just waves and keep our beautiful water ecosystems clean for us to provide ecosystem services drinking water but so many other services that are important and also have these beautiful landscapes to enjoy them to swim uh, to enjoy the cultural values so definitely it's worth it to put more efforts into that important topic um, as i said it's not the end uh, of this workshop but it's the beginning of the next workshops so our intention is to start an interactive dialogue with you. So feel free and feel encouraged to get in touch with us, send us an email, send us your response. You will receive an email from us with all the presentations, with the contact details, with certain websites, with more information on the next activities and actions in the framework of EU Live Blue Lakes of the project and what Lega Ambiente Global Nature Fund and Lake Constance Foundation and all the other Italian partners uh, that are involved, uh, scientific partners, municipalities are doing. And uh, we're very grateful for your participation and uh, for your contribution and for your feedback. And we, of course, will involve you into the next actions. And it's still a topic that is not so high on the agenda of decision makers and uh, politicians. And in the end, we will have to find some allied partners and there are quite many and the municipalities, I would like to come back um, to them, play an important role. And in the last working session, Paolo said, we do not have to focus only uh, on what municipalities can do to clean the lakes and the freshwater systems, but we can also and should also think about how we can support them in their important efforts. And sometimes they are a little bit left alone and the responsibility of the industry is still not uh, fully considered, I would say. So thank you very much, uh, Bettina and uh, Fabrizio, any further last words, comments, conclusions from your side? Uh, we are happy to invite you also, as Udo already said, to our following um, um, events that we are planning. So in spring next year, we have um, uh, a next workshop on microplastics. Uh, so we are thinking of maybe to have it in the form of a conference um, and a next one in um, in autumn 2022. So we will give you information on that and uh, invitations, and we would be happy to see you again. Yes, thank you very much. And as I said, feel encouraged uh, to share your experiences, but also share your thoughts. Uh, Life Blue Lakes has the intention uh, also to create new activities. And you know that there are funding mechanisms like the new EU Horizon Europe program um, or EU Life or outside the European territory, Europe 8. So we can even consider which projects are probably connected or linked to the mission and to the objectives of EU Life Blue Lakes. And if you have an idea and if you see a possibility and opportunity for joint collaboration for new projects, for synergies, for dynamic and momentum uh, connected to the, this um, EU life project, then, um, yeah, we, as I said, I'll repeat myself, we encourage you uh, to propose these ideas to, to us and we will try to facilitate then uh, the feedback and feed it back into the session, into the next session that we will be organizing. So perfectly on time. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, stay healthy thank you. and stay happy and don't lose your humor and stay in touch with us. And we really hope that there will be an opportunity to meet in person again. Until then, we're happy that we have these tools and that you're able to use them. Take good care. All the best to you. Thanks for being here. 
Thanks for your thank you. 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 Thank you